Here we go. Spoiler alert, audience. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Jason Show Home Edition. I'm Jace. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed uh, getting out there and enjoying the weather. I'm not going to complain about the weather because that's what we do in, in winter. And then when we get to summer, we start complaining about the heat. I ain't going to do that. It was beautiful. And I hope you guys got out and enjoyed it. As I'm taping this today, it's 175 degrees out. I'm sweating a little bit. Let me look at the monitor. Yeah, you may be able to see it, but I don't care. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to sweat. I don't care because it's not winter. And I don't want winter. I want summer. We, we ask about it. We want it uh, nine months out of the year and we have it. I'm not going to complain. Uh, and speaking of the nice weather, uh, I really hope you guys got out, maybe sat on a patio somewhere because tomorrow, uh, you guys may have heard the governor's press conference tomorrow, restaurants uh, can open back up for indoor seating with a limited capacity. I think it's uh, uh, up to 250 people, something like that, still following social uh, distancing rules, six feet apart. Uh, you can't touch people. Uh, and you, uh, you know, you got the staff has to wear masks, all those, po you guys, I'm not going to bore you the policies. Anyway, I got to tell you, I was out in a boot last week, uh, taking part into some, uh, some patio dining. And I just want to give a shout out to uh, the 1029 bar in Northeast Minneapolis and another one of my favorites, the Pine Brook in the Princeton, Cambridge area. Both of them, they, they did it so well. Uh, they followed all the rules. The staffs were wearing gloves and uh, masks and uh, the, the food was great. And I got to just tell you, and, uh, you know, look, I, I, I took every safety precaution and I'm a little worried. There's inherent risks with everything. I could, you know, this light could fall on me right now. But um, going out on last Tuesday with my girls, it just made me feel a little more human. You know, it made me feel like, oh, look, there's people over there socializing. And it just made me. I don't know, it kind of refreshed my soul and it, it was so nice. But one more note, again, tomorrow, uh, restaurants open up. If you're going to go to a restaurant, if I can just uh, plead with you, hashtag, don't be a Gladys Kravitz. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you see something that maybe concerns you, uh, go to the manager and let the restaurant folks try to fix it. Uh, don't get, uh, don't go on the Google uh, and complain, give them an opportunity to fix it because we really, it's, it's, it's cheesy. You see it on banners. We're all in this together, but we really are. And we need these restaurants to survive, to help our company. So, or, or, or our economy. So, uh, when you go visit these places, uh, it, it, it go up to the manager if you see something, uh, cause they're good people. They just want to do the right thing. So congratulations to all the restaurants and we look forward to visiting you, uh, in the very near future. Okay. Speaking of food, let's get started. Everybody. It is time for the hot niche. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. That was goofy. I have no idea what that noise was, but we're going to continue. Remember I was telling you about Quibi. Now Quibi is the 400th 22nd streaming service that you guys uh, have to pay for now and uh, that we all have to pay for. Quibi stands for short bites, which means all of their episodes are are basically under a, a 10, 10 minutes. I thought this was a great idea uh, and it still is, but there's trouble. This is what I mean. It launched back in April. The, uh, the launch went fairly well, but now page six and some Quibi employees aren't happy because Reese Witherspoon earned $6 million to narrate a nature show for Quibi. I don't know what it was about, uh, cows or zebras or a crow or something. And, and, and that was happening at the same time layoffs were happening at Quibi. Not a good look. I don't really think, I love Reese. No hate on the prairie. No hate on the little prairie. But I don't think Reese needs, how much was it? 10, uh, what, how much did I say right there? six million or whatever to narrate um a nature show i'll do that for fifty dollars there's the zebra walking across the plain looking for his next meal see i'll do it for 75 but um i can see where people are upset and people are also uh not liking the service i for one i gotta tell you i like it um, I think we're all going to like it when we go back to some normalcy, when we have to wait in line for things, because that's really what the service is for. 
all of those moments in life when you're waiting in line and you're like, okay, I have two minutes. Oh, let's look at this episode. I like that concept. It just launched when none of us are waiting in line. We're all waiting to walk from the couch to the kitchen. Yeah. Okay, let's move to music. Uh, we're halfway through uh, 2020. And music, e even uh, in the middle of a pandemic, uh, music's one of those bright spots. Uh, and, and we've loved it. And I can already tell you, uh, there's some lists out, even though we're midway, there's some music lists out of like the best of the biggest of, and can you, can you, can I, can you guess what one of the biggest songs of 2020 is here? He, this is all don't you need to know. Show up, don't come out. Don't stop caring about me now. Yep. That song right there. So Spin came out with their uh, 50 best songs of 2020 so far. And Dua, Dua Lipa with Don't Stop Now uh, is the top song. Now, that doesn't surprise me. I, the minute I heard it, I went, oh, yeah, that's that song. Because, guys, I'm really bad with names of songs. Music is not uh, the genre that I excel at in entertainment. But the minute I heard it, I'm like, oh, yeah, Don't Stop Now. That's it. From her latest album uh, is the top song. Now, other artists on the list... This young lady right here, that's right, Billie Eilish, uh, Lizzo, the Dixie Chicks, and Lady Gaga. Eilish, though, talk about having a year. She has had, I mean, 2020 may be a just, woo, year. But Billie Eilish before was having just a fantastic, fantastic year. And I have a feeling 2020 will not be the end uh, of her reign because she's, she's so talented and so young. I mean, I was working at Past Pets at that age. Mm. Uh, one more story for you in the hot dish. And this comes from our executive producer, Jeff. He loves the story. I'm just going to put up this graphic. There we go. Cattle troughs are trendy. What do I mean? Well, public pools are still closed because of the pandemic, but people are getting creative in their quest to cool off. That's right. Forget about above ground pools. Forget about kiddie pools that you can buy at the Walmart. No. Cattle troughs are trendy. According to the New York Post, cattle troughs are the latest must-have item. People are using them with the industrial-looking uh, 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 troughs as pools, filling them with hundreds of gallons of water. That's right. And they hipsters are loving this, loving the troughs as pools. You know what? If I was really wanting some Instagram followers and I didn't live where I live, where I'm sure the association... Uh, and the Gladys Kravitzes would complain. I think I'd swim around in a trough, but that's just me. If you uh, if you've been swimming around in a trough, please send us a picture. I beg you, please. There we go. There's your hot dish. Okay, everybody, go grab another cup of coffee. As I reach over here, go grab another cup of coffee. Get some more breakfast and meet me back here in just a few minutes. We'll be back in a moment. Thanks for being here. Welcome back to the Jason Show Home Edition. It's been a while since we've seen our next friend. Uh, he's a good one, and we've missed him. What? But we haven't been traveling. But now people are slowly starting to travel again, and they also have a lot of questions. And here with some answers, hopefully, is our good friend Jared from Thrifty Traveler. What's up, my friend? Hey, great to see you, Jason. Great to see you. I I've thought about you a lot over the last few months uh, because other than restaurants and, and well, there's a, you, the list is long of of industries affected uh, by the pandemic and uh, the stay at home orders travel definitely has. Let's start with uh, something that a lot of folks watching. It's not pretty. It's not overly exciting, but it's so important to a lot of folks refunds and the web that people get stuck in. What can you tell folks, Jared? Yeah. So, you know, if, if any of you guys have had, you know, flights that were booked before the pandemic and then, you know, now you're like not sure what to do, you know, Thrifty Travelers really become kind of consumer advocates for you guys, you know, so you can try to get a cash refund. I mean, the airlines are offering these vouchers for future use on that airline, but cold hard cash, let's be honest, is what we want to get in people's pockets. Um, so there's a lot of different rules as far as, you know, if your flight is canceled, you're due a refund by law. You know, if there's a significant time change, depending on your airline, from two to five hours, or if you had a nonstop flight and now it's a flight with a connection, you know, you're due a refund by U.S. DOT law. Again, you're right. It's super complicated, hard to understand, but we've made it easy to understand. Go to thriftytraveler.com refunds. 
we have a great flow chart that'll walk you through all the steps and tell you what you need to do to get that cash back in your pocket. I, I would imagine, Jared, you and your team have spent probably the better part of the last few months working on that flow chart because every airline, am I wrong on this, Jared? Every airline is different. Uh, every, every situation is different. And that's what the consumers get caught in. Am I right on that? No, you're absolutely right, Jason. Uh, you know, the best has been Delta. They've been the most consumer friendly. They've had the the best, you know, policies where Americans been okay, but United's been the worst. I mean, they've extended, they've just limited the amount of refunds that they're giving out by changing the rules in the background and not really telling people. Obviously, an awesome, an awful move for customers. So, as I know you're well aware, Jason, you know, I've always been a fan of Delta. You're also a fan of Delta just from flying them. And yeah. they continue to to you know do things right by the consumer, which I think corporations really show their true colors during times of crisis. And I think this is a good example, especially now with Delta, why you should give them their money, your money, you know, into the future. Uh, other than refunds, there's a lot of news. It seems like I mean, we could literally probably do the segment every other day. There's news popping all over, especially as more states open, more uh, as we're taping this right now. Uh, you and I were joking off air. I obviously know this, the Disney World uh, opening up. What's some other headlines, Jared, that you want to touch on? Yeah, so, you know, like you said, we could have this every single day. So you go to thriftytraveler.com slash COVID-19, all one word, COVID-19, and we have the daily news, whether it's, yeah, domestic news about travel, what's opening up, you know, Disney opening up in July, um, or international news. You know, probably one of the first countries that's going to open up is going to be Iceland. And probably one of the places where you would feel the safest just to be in the open air, um, Nordic air. So um, there's so many things changing and all the rules are changing for the airlines all the time. And we're on top of it every single day. Um, and it's 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 been a wild ride. <laughs> yeah, literally. I want to ask you, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but this just popped in my mind because I see a headline here and I see a headline there. And as someone that does go to Disney, I'm always looking at the flights to Orlando. I'm hearing a rumor going back to Delta. Uh, are, are they thinking of adding back a few routes? Are you hearing that, Jared? Yes. So just this morning, we saw we, we see some insider memos and things of that nature. And right now, Delta specifically is limiting, you know, only 60% of their seats are full. And they're going to do that through June. And if you book flights now through the end of June, you can also cancel them for a voucher any time into the future for the most part, generally, which is very consumer friendly. So uh, there was an internal memo that we saw this morning. Um, you know, the Delta was was discussing that 10 to 20% of their flights are actually full, full to the extent that 60% of them are full. So they're yeah. going to start, yes, adding more routes back. Um, so we are seeing more demand. You know, what is that going to look like long term? You know, people are so unsure, understandably, of getting back in the air. But yeah, I would expect, you know, we've hit kind of the low, um, you know, at the beginning of May and late April. And people are now feeling a little bit more confident booking this summer into the fall and winter. Other than your website and other good resources, something you've been busy over the last few months. I, I know it's like, We've had nothing else to do. Might as well be productive. Uh, tell everyone about your <laughs> <laughs> tell everyone about your YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, you go thriftytraveler.com slash uh, sorry, youtube.com slash thrifty traveler, and that's our YouTube channel. And we have like all of the most important like concepts you need to know about, whether it's booking cheap flights or how to book, you know, travel in uncertain times like this. Or you know just how to get a refund, um, and our whole team has been working, and my wife now is on the team, and she's been working overtime with creating video content as well since we're quarantined together. So yeah, um, it's become a family affair, and there's just lots of great information again at uh, YouTube.com/slash Thrifty Traveler. Jared, before we let you go, this is just a general question that I was wondering, and, and you would be more in the know than me. I was talking to Colin about this. Do you think because the airlines are suffering and there has been such a reduction in service? Is it going to result, and I know you don't have a crystal ball, but you, you, do, you do see stuff and you do see trends. We as consumers, when things get back to even a little bit more normal and people do start flying again, are we going to see higher prices, do you think, generally? Or are there going to be good deals because the airlines want us back on? 
So we just released a great video on this exact topic oh, on look at Tuesday. Me and I, honest, people watching, <laughs> I swear, Jared and I did not talk about this beforehand. I look at me just being no, so perfect. We, I know. I was like, wow, this softball. No. So this is what we expect. In the next year, I mean, airline prices are going to remain low. It's just supply and demand. And there's really no demand right now. Um, so airlines really can't raise prices. But the thing is, long term, what will competition among the airlines look like? If lots of airlines simply go out of business or disappear or they merge together, less competition will lead to higher prices long term. So, you know, it's all about how long does COVID-19 last? Do we get a vaccine? how long is you know the economic turmoil uh you know impacting the airlines and the economy as a whole um and to get without getting too nerdy it's it's it, it's really hard to know long term um but for the short term i would say you know into early 2021 i mean we've seen the lowest prices we've ever seen in the u.s domestically here in the u.s or or abroad um yeah. i mean prices have just been bonkers well all of the resources uh, at the YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com slash thrifty traveler or just thrifty traveler.com. Jared, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much, buddy. Great to see you as well, Jason. Thanks. I love that long hair. I love that long hair. <laughs> 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 We're going to take a break, everyone. Stay right there. Back right after. And welcome back to the Jason Show Home Edition. It is time for one of my favorite segments, and that is Jason's non-negative news. For the next four minutes, there's going to be nothing snarky. Well, I can't promise that. Uh, nothing negative. It's just going to be happy good news. And we're going to start with a happy anniversary. And I know for anybody uh, that's a kid of the 80s like me, uh, this is going to mean something to you. This week is the 35th anniversary of the Goonies, right there. You're looking at the original trailer. I love this movie. It is a hallmark of the 80s generation, which I am proud to be. Uh, it is a Richard Donner, Steven Spielberg produced movie about a group of kids in Oregon who go uh, uh, literally on a treasure hunt. And uh, young Josh Brolin right there. Um, uh, it's so many, just so many good moments. Chunk, uh, Data, Mikey, uh, Hey, you guys, this movie just means so much to me. I can't even begin to tell you there's data because, you know, growing up, my mom and my dad had a few traditions in their marriage or, or we as a family. And every summer, uh, most summers, we would go to Daytona Beach, Florida. I had really young parents. My parents were cool. Um, so cool is I wanted to show you this. We would travel to Florida in that Trans Am right there, which I believe is a 1979 uh, I'm sure I'll be corrected on Facebook if I'm wrong, but my mom, that was such a cool car. But anyway, there's little Jason with his bowl cut, but um, they would take the T-tops off and we would travel from Michigan City, Indiana, which is at the top of Indiana, all the way down to Daytona Beach. I don't know why. My, I don't think my dad liked to fly, but anyway, and I would sit in the back with the black leather seats and roast like a little gay tater tot kid. And then I would have my tape recorder. And I would drive my dad crazy because this was back in the day where you would record songs off the speaker. So I recorded the song, Let's Hear It for the Boy, which remains my all time favorite song. I would listen to that on repeat and drive my dad nuts. But I bring up Florida because during one of those vacations, my memory sticks with me that we went to go see the Goonies. So I think of my childhood and I think of so many things when I think of uh, the classic, the Goonies. It is available. Look at this. It's available on uh, this is on DVD. There's a, a box set available. It's on various streaming services. If you have a kid that's around like 10 or 11, I'm telling you, this movie stands up and it's just uh, it's just great. I love it. So the Goonies, happy anniversary. Another piece of good news. This poem has been trending lately uh, that I wanted to share with you. And maybe you've seen it. I wanted to read it to you. And it's really about this year because we've all been thinking to ourselves, this year has just been, I mean, oh my goodness. Well, let me read this to you. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from, an, from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 
2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. I love that poem. I love the sentiment. Uh, I, I got to tell you, I get hope from the generation under mine, the, the Gen Wires. Young people are so engaged. They want to do good in this world. And it just makes me proud and happy. And that's a good way to look at this year, because at the beginning, when the pandemic hit, you're thinking to yourself, oh, my goodness, what's going on? And then, uh, you know, and then the killing of George Floyd. And 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 it, it's just been, oh, my goodness. But this is a good way to look at it, I think. And I wanted to share it with you because I think that is a little a little slice of optimism right there. And I I choose to hold on to that. My dear friends, we're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back to the Jason Show Home Edition. Well, look who's here. Look who's here. It's Jeff and Ted, everyone. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Um, we're going to do a couple things today, friends. We're going to do Jason Show, Show and Tell. And we're also going to dish a little bit. And we're going to begin with Jason Show, Show and Tell. Try to say that four times really quick. And we're going to begin with the oldest first, and that would be Jeff. Jeff? Show and tell time. You say that every time and the viewers know it's not true. Whatever. Okay, I'm going to take you back. To take the year, us back. 1993. Picture it. 1993. 27 years ago. Ted was two years old. <laughs> I have my yearbook from 1993. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, look. Who is the president of the student council? <laughs> <laughs> is that you sure was of course you were the president didn't you have like seven people by process in your class by process of elimination you could either be what ted treasurer vice president and he was captain of the football team the I drum major in the I band was. I was first chair saxophone, but we won't. And you go. played, and Jeff, you did play. Ted's not wrong. You played. You were Sporty Spice, weren't you? Well, that leads to my second show and tell. Ooh. It's a visual cue that I have to put something on. I hope it's I a have my letterman's jacket. Oh my goodness. Did you letter in art? What was that? Yes. I lettered in track and field and football, knowledge bowl knowledgeable wait 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 because i lettered in art that's why i said that i lettered in drama class you could letter in in what was that arguing bowl what was it knowledge bowl no, knowledge bowl i went to state minnesota state knowledge bowl championship Ooh. what what is knowledge bowl it's like it's like jeopardy for high school kids oh yeah, Ted, i was did the, you... like i was the pop culture expert of course you were now look what i do but look at, and my letter jacket still fits. Actually, wow! Look at that. You don't so, have any well, like you don't have any medals that claim. I, I well, my my mom had it clean, so I I took the medals off. I still have them somewhere. The medals. And what I are you, my general? National Honor Society patch on too. I can't. I just can't. Is there anything on the back? I forgot. Is it no? Because my the letter girls. The girls had that flap, remember? And the boys had these. The flap was for girls? Because I had the flap. <laughs> I had I mean, one with the flap. I'm not being, I'm just saying that's how our school did it. Oh, yeah. Our guys, I had a flap with my name on it. Well, that's how they do uh -huh. it in Indiana. I, yeah. Anyway. Hey, it's like 100 degrees. I got to take this off. Take that off. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Jason, show, show and tell. Okay, Ted, what are you showing us? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really couldn't find a whole lot around here, you know, because I've been paring down what I have. <laughs> but I do have this thing that I have never used before. That's a leveler. A level? Yeah, I've never used it. Well, you, you level photos with it or Is like... level? Check your camera. Is it level, Ted? <laughs> I think so. Are you, a, are you a handy person, Ted? No. Not at all. <laughs> Could you expand that answer? We have two more minutes. <laughs> I, as you see that picture and this thing, those are the two things that I've done 
handy wise in the last seven years. This most work I've done in my life. That <laughs> picture up there, that would have been the most work I've done in seven years up until this point. Okay, Ted, I think we should level. Yeah, no, 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 Jeff, I'm but saying. I didn't, level, I didn't level any of them. Ted, I know. Well, that's going to be level. level. It's, it's, it is level. Okay, <laughs> here's the ultimate test. I need you. Let's get the camera back on Ted. Ted, I need you to walk to your picture, and let's see if your picture is leveled. Should we aim it? Right there. Okay, go level your picture. Let's see if it's leveled, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> This is the greatest level. TV. level. Is it level? And I didn't even use this. Oh my good! Did you level. buy that, or was that given to you, Ted? Uh, my dad gave it to me for like my birthday or something. Really? Yeah. Still got the plastic wrapping on. Oh wow! <laughs> that probably added the plastic added a little weight to it, Ted. I don't know if we're if it's accurate. That's good. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I have a couple, I have a couple. I thought I would go above and beyond today and Jeff, no cracks there. But so the first one is the easiest to explain. And uh, that is this one right here. This is because I think, you know, everyone's quoting Mr. Rogers right now, you know, look for the helpers. So I found this in my collection of stuff that I've collected since working at Channel 9. It's an autograph, Ooh, Mr. Mr. McFeely. McFeely. Who is that? What? what? Get him out. I, You're out of the zoo. I didn't really watch it. Sorry. What? Who's Mr. McFeely? Was he, he was like a the, mailman or something? Yes. Yes, he's the mailman. Rain, sleet, snow, or that horrible woman with rouge. Uh, what was her name? Lady, Lady Aberlene. Mr. Oh. McFeely. Okay. I... Thank goodness we have to take a break because I don't know. I, Jeff, we're the same age. You're slightly older, but you watched this. Kind of. I, I wasn't I a huge fan. Okay, stay oh, right there. To Jason. Yeah, whatever. Stay right there. More show and tell plus a little dish when we return. Welcome back to The Jason Show. If you would like to be the executive producer of The Jason Show, please send your <laughs> resume to... No, we were just shocked, weren't we, Ted? We were just shocked by the fact that Jeff did not know who Mr. McFeely is. I Jeff, thought he looked like someone in Fleetwood Mac or something. Okay, I can't. Anyway, Mr. McFeely, this was so nice. This was back, I don't even know what year it was, but Mr. Ma I met him from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. We're doing show and tell, and in just a little bit, we're going to dish a little bit too. So I didn't know what Jeff was going to do, Ted, but I actually have something in line with what Jeff did, and that is, this is almost, let me look at the date here. Oh, this is almost to the date. This is my hometown newspaper from Michigan City, Indiana, The News Dispatch. And this is from June 1st, 1992, uh, the week that I graduated high school. And if you look right there, we were the front page. Now, we're going to put up a graphic a little bit later. But if you look right there in the middle, you can see my big head right there. I was front <laughs> and center. That's how slow the news day was in Michigan City. The senior class made the front, uh, front page. But actually, that's not true. We made it because we had two high schools in Michigan City, Rogers High School and Elston, and we were going to be the, one of the last uh, classes from the split schools. They combined uh, after we left. So that was really the story oh. there. Now, this next one, Jeff is going to roll his eyes, and this gives you a, a, a look into my weirdness as a teenager. I'm going to go like this so you can't see it, but this was kind of an address book of mine when I was a kid. We'll put up the graphic right now. You'll see it. Um, and it has some of my friends, like Bernice Corley, hey, girl, my friend Bear. But at the bottom, you'll see that it says CBS and the Laura Mar Photo Department. So I was so obsessed. This proves my obsession with Dallas. I was so obsessed with the show Dallas that I had the number for the photo department 
for the production company of the show. And I would call them and, and say that I was working, that I was, <laughs> that I was working on a story about Dallas and could they send me all the publicity photos they had. So I got all of these photos from Dallas because they thought that I was working in some like small town newspaper. Well, the end of the story is youngins won't realize this, but you used to get charged for long distance uh, back mm -hmm. in the day. And I would never ask my mom permission to call Culver City, California. And I would call them quite often. I racked up a $400 phone bill. And <laughs> I racked up a $400 phone bill because I got to be friendly with a woman named Carmela who worked on the show. Um, and I would talk to her for a long time and it rang up a bill. Um, what would you so, ask Carmela? Just like what's, you know, just, you know, what can you tell me about the rest of the season? I, what I, JR do today? <laughs> <laughs> but no, so yeah, it was crazy. And I was grounded. Uh, Dar uh, grounded me from going out and I wasn't allowed to watch Dallas uh, for three weeks. Um, but I secretly had my friend Ange recorded on VHS for me. So, yeah, anyway. Wow. You seem to get grounded a lot. We should have your mother back on and to ask her some questions. I wasn't – I was actually – I think maybe I can count four times I was grounded. Oh, that's not that many. No. How about you, Mr. Debate Team? I was kind of the good kid <laughs> most of the time. Shocking. Yeah, shocking. Ted, were you ever grounded? My parents did not believe in grounding. What? Oh. Uh, they just took away my TV. <laughs> oh, nice. Wait, you had your own TV? Well, TV privileges. Oh, okay. It I had a TV in my room. room. Uh, I knew that, please. Oh. Everyone knew that. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> Even through Zoom, Ted. Venom. Jeff's venom, venom is spitting through the internet. Ow. Oh, <laughs> Judge Judy here. Anyway, okay, so for our remaining minutes, we're going to dish a little bit with the guys. And I, rumor has it, Adele, that you guys want to talk about Big Brother. Why? They're bringing it back this year, this summer. What? So it, it, you, Big Brother usually starts right about now, right around end of June, and then goes until September. Well, we have a pandemic, so you know, what's going on. Yeah. So the rumor is, is that they're going to do an all-star version, bringing back all the Big Brother greatest, greats, and then quarantine for 14 days, and then put them in the house. For the new oh, season. really? Uh, Julie Moonves is still going to be there to host. What's her last name? Julie Moonves. Yes. Don't forget it. But Ted, who do you want back? Um... Well, I think, you know, obviously our favorite, McRae's got to go back. McRae, Janelle. Janelle um, and then, ooh, there's so many. Evil Dick, do you remember him? Oh, and his daughter? There's no way they, there's no, yeah, his daughter. Um, ooh, there's so many good choices. Um, anyone who just is going to stir the pot. We, yeah. need, we need pot stirrers during this time. I'm fat. <laughs> I'm fascinated with the process. That's really smart of them. And I'm sure they're signing waivers that see, you know, okay. that the network's not liable for anything. Oh, the people on Big Brother will sign up for anything. They don't care about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, though, for our own selfish purposes? If our buddy McCray, if you're watching McCray, hi, buddy. If McCray got on, that would be the best thing ever. We should start and a campaign. They should have like a quarantine room. <laughs> yes oh i love that that's really good okay now we have about a minute left i want to do a follow-up and this is going to be hard for me i have to admit you two were right and on to something i have gotten a lot of emails both on the jason show facebook and my personal everybody is loving 90 day fiance oh, best I mean, I'm not kidding. I've gotten, I had a woman stop me. I was up at the cabin playing pull tabs this weekend and a woman stopped me and said, it's so good this year. <laughs> that was a horrible imitation of her, but yeah. The so you're right. Was this week. Did you what? watch it, Ted? The reunion. I watched, like, I watched like the first hour of it and 
they did so they do the reunion like a Zoom meeting. Yep. But you don't know how that's going to go, but it, it kind of worked for me. Yeah, they did that with RuPaul too. It was all right. Yeah. So just to, to keep track, Big Brother on CBS. Uh, and then you can also watch TLC for 90 Day Fiance. Guys, thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye bye. And don't you go anywhere right now. We'll be back right after these words. And welcome back to the Jason Show Home Edition. Uh, our next guest is a friend of ours. He's a friend of mine. And uh, when the killing of George Floyd happened and the uprising in the Twin Cities uh, happened, he was one of the first voices that I, I knew I wanted to reach out to. Uh, please welcome Chef and our dear friend, Justin Sutherland. Good morning, Justin. Morning, Jason. So good to see you, brother. It is good to see you. And I, uh, I, I, I thought about... I, I even feel it feels weird, doesn't it, man? I mean, we got the pandemic. We had this. It even feels odd asking people, how are you? But I am going to ask that because I always like to say this. You and I are real friends, not TV right. friends. How are you doing? Um, obviously loaded question. Um, you know, good days and bad days. I mean, I mean, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm doing OK, but I'm definitely hurting for a lot of things that are that are happening right now. What do you think, Justin? What's been. As you said, the, the, I, I've been calling this layers of anguish and layers of sadness right. and layer of fear. W what has been? Um, I, I've seen you out. I've seen you. Uh, I, I've seen you marching. What has been a prevailing thought in your mind that you want to share? Because I, again, I think you're just such a great voice. Uh, you know, for, for us, for our community, for the entire Twin Cities community. People know you on this show. What's been something that keeps running through my through your mind that you want to share? I mean, I think that's twofold. I mean, a uh, that this has to stop. This can't happen anymore. We are we are sick and tired of we're sick of it. And I mean, I think it's it's more prevalent now than ever. So I mean, that's always pumping through my veins. Um, but also, you know, they of course they want to show the violence and looting and whatnot. But uh, my pride for for Minnesota and our community. And I mean, these have been some of the most peaceful things I've ever been a part of. Um, the next day cleanup efforts, the food that's being donated, the people that are out there taking care of and protecting our city. So, I mean, I, I march with sadness, I march with purpose, and I, I also march with a lot of pride. We're obviously going to have you back on uh, to talk about, you have so much going on. There's, a, there's another time for that. But I do yeah. want to talk about, because you just touched on it there. Um, I, I, went down, uh, I went down to South Minneapolis on, uh, I went down to Lake Street on Saturday, and mm -hmm. I too was just, I almost felt like I should go because there were thousands of people there, Justin. Thousands. Of, of every color, every background. And I thought to myself, you know what I thought, and you're younger than I am, but I thought this generation under me, they're gonna make a difference. The difference isn't gonna start with uh, politicians and nothing right. again, I'm not, I'm not, this isn't political, but th right. don't you feel that Justin? I feel I, this generation, the, 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 the Gen Wires, the, the, the millennials, they get it in a way that like uh, the older generations that, don't get it. That even I haven't. I mean, you know, yeah. this is, we've seen this story play out, unfortunately, so many times and always the same results. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think even, the, even the governor said, I think everybody should go down and see that space, feel that energy. It's palpable. You can feel it. You can feel the sadness in the air, but also you can feel, I, I mean, you can, it's, it's, it's joy mixed with sadness, mixed with this just intense desire for change. And I've never felt, you know, such an, an intense experience being on a, on a corner in, in Minneapolis. So it's, I, yes, I, I completely agree with you. I mentioned all your ventures a few minutes ago and I, I was going to say something I got off track, but I, I mentioned uh, what you do because I have been personally, because I know so many people in the restaurant industry like yourself, haven't you been moved, Justin? Because and, and, and there's so many industries to thank and to give a hug to. Well, when we can't right. hug people. But anyway, <laughs> but haven't you been moved, Justin, with the restaurant industry, even in the throes of COVID, when the, when the restaurant industry is suffering so bad, the restaurant industry is coming out and helping people, helping the community, helping neighborhoods. I have been so moved by that. 
And it's, and I, I think that just speaks to the people in our industry, the passion that yes. we have. I mean, you're right. I mean, day one of COVID, restaurants were the most adversely affected. I mean, we were shut down immediately. We didn't know how we were going to pay our bills. But everybody that I know, the first thing we did is pulling our perishables out of the coolers, opening up community kitchens, feeding the neighborhood, you know, making sure people get through this because that's what we do. And I think that's what people need to understand about the restaurant industry. Um, you know, we, we're, we're givers, we're feeders, we're carers. This is our love language. And we don't know how to do anything else, whether there's, you know, financial gain or not. Uh, b before I have one more question uh, on, on the restaurant industry, uh, how are you doing? Because, I mean, we can tackle two tough topics, like I mentioned, COVID. Yeah. Uh, how, 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 how are your businesses doing? Do you see a light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, how's it going in, in that arena? Um, there's a light. It's, it's dim and ever-changing. Um, you know, obviously, I mean, I'm going to go from 9 or 11 or however many restaurants there was before. I mean, definitely slim down. A lot of them will not be reopening currently. But, you know, I'm, I'm also got a lot of hope and excitement. I mean, we're moving Handsome Hog up to the hill. We just we just built a new 120 seat patio up on Cathedral Hill. You know, Handsome Hog has always been the place that's been on this long wait. And now we're going to have 300 seats so we can socially distance. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy about those things that are coming. We'll get the rooftop at Oxcart going. Um, you know, we just, uh, Brian Ingram and I are about to uh, rebirth the Happy Gnome, which which I'm very, very excited about. Um, so there are there are definitely good things on the horizon. But, but like you said, in the minds of the restaurant industry people, those aren't even the things we're worried about right now. We're worried about how we continue to feed our communities. I want to end on a message of hope before you go, my friend, because um, I know that you're, you're just an optimistic guy when we see each other at at Rosedale, it's, uh, are you hopeful? Do you have, as you say, as you said, this has been going on for decades. This has been going, uh, uh, brutality against uh, African-Americans has been going on for so long. Are you, do you see a glimmer of hope? Do you see a sea change? Uh, again, loaded. Um, yeah, I would say that, and you know, I'm not, you know, I've, I've lived through my things, you know, I, yeah, I marched, marched for Philando and all these other things, you know, I wasn't there for the civil rights movement, but, um, this is from what I've seen, one of the largest and greatest coming together I've ever seen when these situation happens. And I, it's unfortunate that it had to happen. It's unfortunate that it had to happen in our city that we love. But at the same time, I think if anybody can can put this together, I think it's Minnesotans and the world is watching us. And it's you know, it's it's up to us to really because I do believe that this can't happen again. If if this happens again, I think it's going to be much worse and many more things will burn. So I I hope that doesn't happen. I see the hope in people's eyes. I see the community coming together. Um, I see the reaction from our government. I hope they take swift action. So. I'm I'm on the fence. I'm more hopeful than I've ever been, but I'm still skeptical skeptical because this system has continuously failed us. So, absolutely. Well, I appreciate. Look, I appreciate you. I thank you for doing this, and uh, I know you're busy, and it just means a lot to me. And I I love the fact. I feel very lucky having this platform, and I appreciate your voice on it. So, thank you, my friend. I love you. Thank you, Jason, and I love you too. I cannot wait to, to give you that hug because they're, they're so good. And uh, send some biscuits too. <laughs> I will do so. Justin Sutherland, everyone. We're going to take a break and we'll be back right after. Thanks, Morgan. And welcome back to the Jason Show Home Edition. I, I so appreciate you uh, watching today. Thanks to all of our guests. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, we have some great shows coming up. And again, just a reminder, we are brand new on Tuesdays and Thursdays with best ofs Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I, I just want to repeat because I haven't said this in a while, and I got an email from a woman over the weekend that said, hey, why aren't you uh, live every day like uh, TCL, uh, Twin Cities Live? And I said, well, here's the deal. Let me just be honest. And, you know, I pulled the curtain back. I tried to on everything. Uh, uh, the FOX just has uh, uh, great safety precautions in place. Uh, they only want a limited number of folks in the building. And I really appreciate it. Uh, the, the managers, uh, Mim and Sheila and Jeff and Kelly, they've been great uh, keeping all of us safe. Uh, so 
what I'm trying to tell you is when it is safe uh, for our crew to get back and to produce great television, we'll be in there. But right now, uh, all of the resources wisely are going to our Fox 9 News team. So I just appreciate your patience. Thanks for watching when you do. And like I said, I, I, uh, I mentioned to get back in there, too, and do great shows uh, in, our, in our beautiful studio, on our bright set. Uh, uh, but I'm going to do it when it's safe. And uh, when it's uh, appropriate to do. Uh, but right now, like I said, I'm just so proud of our Fox 9 News team, especially in the times we're living in. Uh, I can't say that enough. So thanks for the email. I, I'm glad that you want to watch more. I, I, I get it. I want it. We, we all that work on the show want to do new episodes, more new episodes. And hopefully very soon we'll be able to do that. But for right now, that's going to do it for us. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us, ask a question like that nice lady did. All you have to do is go to Facebook, Instagram. Uh, or Twitter and search for Jason Show TV. If you're a kid that's watching and you're being bullied, I want you to go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a good day.